Hey folks, let's talk about Audio Sparks. This exclusive and non-exclusive library is very different than other stock libraries or non-exclusive libraries or even exclusive libraries. I've been with AudioSpark since about December of 2020, and it has been a steady part of my non-exclusive library mix, including stock licensing. And I've even had a few nice placements there of $100 or more. They are very uniquely positioned as a library for film and TV, stock music uses, and they also have a pretty interesting streaming and overhead music component. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, they also have a lot of rules a lot of non-exclusive libraries don't have that may limit your decision to put music into this library. So, should you put your music into AudioSparks? In this video, I will tell you exactly how much I've made with this library. I'll tell you about my dealings with them on an internal level, what it's like to work with them, putting songs in, and then how I plan to try and leverage my earnings even a little more with this company. Does that spark your interest? So when you search around for ways to make passive income with music, with non-exclusive libraries and any other kind of music library type things, you're going to eventually hear about audiosparks.com. Now, I joined AudioSparks at the suggestion of my friend Ed Hartman, and Ed could really use all of your thoughts and prayers right now as he is dealing with some health issues. He's a really great guy. He shares a lot of great information. His information is in all of my videos, and he has a great newsletter, so check out Ed. Ed, I hope you're feeling good. Now, while AudioSparks gets grouped in a lot of times with non-exclusive libraries or even stock libraries like Pond5, Audio Jungle, Motion Array, VFine Music, and, and all those kind of things, it's not so much a stock music library as it kind of wants to be more of a music for commercial use type of site. It even says on the very front page, world-class music licensing for creative and commercial uses over 1 million pre-cleared tracks by award-winning artists, composers, bands and orchestras, high quality music for major films, TV shows, commercials, and branding. So that shows you right there that this is not your average library for people looking to find stock music for their YouTube videos. Now, apparently they do this because the two sales that I have had of uh, kind of licensing type things, one was a thing for a hospital and one was for someone's private YouTube video, I believe. It kind of makes me feel like AudioSparks wants to be a little bit more like signing with a music library like crucial music. Audio Sparks offers non-exclusive and exclusive deals for your music, and they offer a streaming service which pays like streaming. So let's break all these down before we get to how to apply and the posting procedures. So first, for those of you who already submit your music to places like Pond5 and Audio Jungle and Motion Array, you can apply as a non-exclusive author. This is what I have done for about a year now. I've made a total of over $250 into my accounts, not on paper. So it is very much figured into my royalty-free income both every month and for the year. I believe I've been paid by them at least two or three times because they pay out in quarters. If you are a royalty-free stock music artist, I see only a few reasons why you would not sign your music with AudioSparks. They do not allow content ID but they just don't want to have to have their clients worry about monetizing their videos and possibly getting a claim. Secondly, they require that all files that you put into the AudioSpark system be perpetual. Now, this is a pretty big deal. This means forever done. Your files are in this system for all time and cannot be taken out. So this means if you want to pitch a non-exclusive song, that you have in AudioSparks or in your other libraries to an exclusive library, do not put that song into AudioSparks because they do not allow you to take it out. So if your songs are not in Content ID, including YouTube monetization through things like CD Baby or DistroKid, and you don't mind them having the songs forever and you don't plan to ever do anything with these songs except keep them in your non-exclusive libraries and just let them make you passive income, then I highly suggest you sign up for AudioSparks and put in your whole catalog. Okay, so are you wanting to sign with an exclusive library that will push your music to TV and film and more? Guess what? Here's your chance. 
Working with AudioSparks as an exclusive artist works about the same as being a non-exclusive artist. You could kind of look at it like signing with Pond5 or Audio Jungle as an exclusive artist. You can't really sign with Pond5 as an exclusive artist in audio, but you can at Audio Jungle. You can sign up as an exclusive artist and a non-exclusive artist or either one. Now, unlike those libraries though, the split remains the same. On Audio Jungle, for example, if you're an exclusive artist, you get a higher percentage than you get as a non-exclusive artist. On AudioSparks, all you get is 40% of the license, so it stays the same no matter if you're exclusive or non-exclusive. This is a little lower than the 50% that seems pretty standard at most exclusive libraries, and some exclusive libraries will even pay 60%, and AudioSparks is only paying 40%, so you have to make those decisions there about that. Let's look at the information that is offered on their web page about being an exclusive artist. First of all, they say that there are increased chances for licensing. Based on historical data, we observe that tracks licensed exclusively through the AudioSparks family of websites on average have more than 25% higher chance of getting licensed when compared to non-exclusive tracks. So there's that. Increased promotion. AudioSparks promotes exclusive artists and tracks on our sites through newsletters to our clients and in our advertising and marketing campaigns. And by the way, this is something I meant to mention. You can also run marketing campaigns for your songs through AudioSparks. I've been doing this for almost a year. I just haven't seen personally any difference in any of those getting licensed. And about the only income I've seen is the streaming income from their overhead music and their streaming sites. But this says increase promotion. So they're going to promote you more as an exclusive artist. Builds website synergy. Having a large base of exclusive tracks encourages the larger media companies to continue licensing your music at the AudioSparks family of websites rather than, I'm not sure about this one, but you can read what they have to say here and figure that out on your own. I'll put the link down in the description to this page and to a, a, quite a few pages on AudioSparks as far as how to get going and all those things. Simplifies shopping for clients. When a client likes one of your exclusive tracks here, they know it's not available on other sites. It's exclusive, so I think you get that. Higher pricing. When a client finds one of your exclusive tracks they love and want to license, your price here is the only price available. Hence, it helps you command a higher price. Again, it's exclusive. I think we're getting the, the gist of it here. Although they do say, based on historical data, we observe that the licensing fee paid by clients for exclusive tracks here is on average 7% higher than for non-exclusive tracks. 7%. By selling exclusively here, your compositions have the potential to earn you more money than if they are also available for licensing elsewhere. Well, what they're trying to say here is that you are just getting more attention as an exclusive track on AudioSparks. I think that 7% is not much higher for a exclusive track over a non-exclusive track, and I'm still making 40%. I'm not sure about that, but you can read more about this and see what you think. Earn internet royalties. Exclusive artists can participate in our internet royalties program to earn residual royalties from the use of your music by clients in web videos on YouTube. What they mean by that is you can work with them for YouTube monetization through their system. And so basically this is like Song Trader. This is similar to a few other sites that um, Jamendo also offers this where you can do monetization through them. As I said in my Drawing the Line video a few videos back, I'm not sure that these sites will be as go-getter as some place that's only focusing on this, like an identifier or like AdRef. I could be wrong, but to me, it seems like there's enough to do with your big library and all the different things that you do for people that Content ID might be something you go after, but... So let's talk about Content ID through AudioSparks. This may not excite you. They only pay 40% of what they collect from Content ID. And if you know anything about some place like Identify, they pay 70% of what they collect in royalties. AdRev pays 80%. But remember, you don't have a choice. This is what the deal pays. It's a 40% deal pretty much across the board. Also remember that most exclusive libraries also split this 50-50 with artists. So if you're going exclusive with AudioSparks and you're getting that exclusive library type 
experience. It is only a little bit less than most exclusive libraries are going to pay you, which is 50% of that. And there might be deals out there with exclusive libraries where they don't pay you any of the content ID income. I don't know. Okay, and they say this simplifies your catalog administration work. Being exclusive at the AudioSparks family of sites mean you will have to upload, configure, manage your content at only one site. So what they're saying is it's exclusive. Okay, that this is this is all pretty standard stuff. Um, I do like this next one, expanded B2B participation options. We license music to various other companies that monetize music. And invariably, these companies require that the tracks we provide them are exclusively controlled by AudioSparks. If you're participating on a, an exclusive basis, your music is eligible to participate in these various deals. And I guess what they're meaning about those B2B type of opportunities is to stores that are playing overhead music and different things like that. However, in my experience, that pays like streaming. Exclusive publishing administration. For those of you who are allocating exclusive tracks to AudioSparks and directing all licensing activities for these tracks through our sites, we are able to administer publishing for your tracks in an exclusive manner, which avoids having to retitle registrations of your tracks. Okay, so this last one is kind of like the Pond5 publishing thing, which I talked about in my video here. It gives them the ability to easily get cue sheets filed and things like that because they are the publisher. If you think that is something that's going to happen, I think there's probably a better chance that your music's going to go to TV through AudioSparks than it is through Pond5, but I could be totally wrong. I don't know where TV shows are finding what they do. I don't know if they find it at AudioSparks or at Pond5 or at Audio Jungle. The thought behind them being your publisher, Pond5, AudioSparks, whoever else might want to be your publisher inside of these libraries, is that they will work harder and be able to file cue sheets because they will be the publisher. If you already have a publisher tied to the song in your PRO, like like your own publisher, then AudioSparks will retitle and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually prefer that places like Pond5 and AudioSparks retitle. That way they don't mess up the entry I already have in BMI. But if you go exclusively with them, I would just have them be the publisher for it. Remember, it's perpetual. So maybe if a license comes along and they are the publisher, they will work harder to get the cue sheets filed. So should you sign with them exclusively? Well, only you can make that decision. Maybe try a portion of your catalog. That's what I'm going to do with them with a few of my different brands this year, just as a try type of thing. We'll see what happens and I'll report back. Now let's talk about Radio Sparks. Now this is their streaming slash background music service that pays every month. Uh, the numbers I see are a lot like streaming with close to 200 audio files in audio sparks. I see about an average of six to $10 per month from this service. Most months I don't see any licenses with them that pay a bigger deal. So I've only seen two in a year and about four months from the taping of this video. But every single month I do see five to 10 or more dollars a month from this Radio Spark service. Again, you get 40% of what they make from this service. It's also important to note that you can opt only in to the Radio Spark service, which means if you are a content ID artist and you can't imagine putting your music into a perpetual library like Audio Sparks, but still want to get a little side money, then Radio Sparks might be for you. You can be content ID because they don't care because this isn't a content ID thing. This is more of a B2B service thing that they're doing and a streaming thing that they're doing. It's more mechanicals. So they don't care if you have content ID on this, on your other libraries and putting this out. Plus it's not perpetual. You can take stuff down off of there anytime you want. Now I can only assume that the RadioSpark site requires the same procedure of putting your songs up as AudioSparks does. And it is a bit of work. So let's look at the procedure of putting your songs on audio sparks. So I hope you have a warm beverage because this is going to take just a bit. Like any site that ingests your music, audio spark has its own procedure for onboarding your music to submit music. The first page you will see is this one. It will tell you what they are looking for and how to get going. Notice that you can apply to audio sparks, radio sparks, and their stock music site, stock music site.com catchy. 
If you look at it though, you'll see that it doesn't look, feel, and most importantly, cost the same as most stock music sites do. To their credit, Audio Sparks does not seem to do bargain basement pricing. It's not a race to the bottom like you see on Pond5 or Audio Jungle where everything is starting to be $5. To me, this kind of feels like they are a company focused on commercial music first rather than stock music. In fact, if we just pick any song on this page at random, you will see the pricing is not in line with most sites. This tells me they are definitely looking for higher end usage for their stock music. I wonder if this is a bit of a disconnect for them since stock music has become kind of a penny business. And they are definitely still in the dollar or hundred dollars per license game. You might like this if you are a artist looking for an exclusive deal and you want your stuff to go into a library that's going to charge for it and not into a race to the bottom at Pond5 or these other sites. Anyway, once you decide to submit to AudioSparks and you've already registered with them and all that stuff, and I would recommend using your email associated with your music, your music name. You will create a vendor account down here at the bottom. Once you are approved as a vendor, and I believe I was approved as a vendor the same day, then you submit an artist application to either AudioSparks or RadioSparks. You can just choose RadioSparks for any music, and that can, again, be a content ID music, and it can be taken out at any time. However, the caveat that I want to share with you on this is there is a six month period from the end of the quarter that it takes to take the song down. Now that's not very helpful if you get a song signed to an exclusive library. Let's say you're part of Radio Sparks and you get a song signed that's in there to an exclusive library. A six month waiting period from the end of the next quarter is not very helpful. So not exactly any time you want. So once you make the choice between being a full Audio Sparks member and getting both Audio Sparks and Radio Sparks, or just being a Radio Sparks member, you'll definitely need to sign up as an artist name. Now I use From the Moment Music for most of all of my stock things, but they asked me to change it to From the Moment because it sounded more artisty. Whatever. It's pretty quick to go through the artist application. First, you sign the artist agreement and read the fine print here to not be surprised about content ID or perpetual. Then you'll fill out the artist app page. It only takes about five minutes. In fact, you may be accepted as soon as 30 minutes. I was just recently on several new artists that I put up there. So once you're approved, then the uploading fun begins. Yippee! Whoosh. So let's talk about uploading to audio sparks it's a lot like a lot a lot like a lot a lot so let's go through the uploading process for a song so here's the process once in the account menu you will go to the vendor tab and choose track upload then you will see the place to upload the tracks you want hit upload now once the track is ready again the instructions are right there they only want wave or aif the tracks are perpetual no content id etc you can quickly and easily upload wave files here and as many as you like then once they are uploaded the real fun begins i i, I this isn't the fun part yet. You come to a screen which asks for the usual info, title, genre, small descriptor, long description, and your keywords. You can also enter a price here, but I would just go with what they put in. Next up is the composer and publisher info, and as you may see here, they act as my publisher on these songs. Everything else is optional though. I usually check all the boxes at the bottom for what the music can be used for. And then we really get to some fun stuff, including a page for selecting instruments, which you can put in as many as you want or as few as you want. A page for moods, which is pretty intense. A page for styles, which is also intense. A page for regions, which I usually don't use unless the song is from or for another country. And a page for lyrics, if you have them, if it's a vocal song. And then a page on what the lyrics are about. I told you, it's a lot. Like a lot, a lot. That means a lot, a lot. Remember that it's a lot because they are trying to be very careful to make sure your songs are found by clients. So if you want songs to be found, if you want people to go beyond the keywords and description you have and maybe find things in a way you wouldn't have thought about it, you're going to want to use 
the instruments, the moods, the style sections to make sure that people find your songs in their huge catalog of over a million songs. And at that point, finally, you are pretty much done. Although I would recommend going to the price page and letting it readjust after you put in all the information. Sometimes it just changes the way they decide to charge for it. You can also go in and do things like group versions together, which is nice, and change anything else you like. So if you've watched all of this, you're thinking, wow, is this really worth all this trouble? And I can't put these into content ID. They're perpetually in there. I can't take them ever out. Even if I have a song in Radio Sparks, it's gonna take me six months or more to get out of there. So let's look at those two seemingly huge roadblocks in reality. Are you actually on Content ID? Are you thinking about being on Content ID? If you're not, then it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about this particular thing. If you are, then you are really a composer or producer and you're putting your music up to stock sites to make money on the back end as well as any that you could make on the front end. The thing that I realize every time I look at Audio Sparks is they really don't position themselves to be a stock library. Even though they literally have a site called stockmusicsite.com, catchy. They still seem to me as a site for serious content creators or even music for television and film and other kinds of projects like that. My two larger license with Audio Sparks have been for a TV commercial and for a film documentary. One was licensed at Audio Sparks and one was licensed at Stock Music Site. Catchy. Although the use from Stock Music Site was for the TV thing. It may be more clear, as I've mentioned earlier, to think of Audio Sparks as an exclusive or non exclusive music library. Especially since with an exclusive library, you really wouldn't put in songs that were tied to Content ID, and you would not put in songs that you didn't expect to perhaps be perpetual some, at some point. Now, if you are a stock music producer, and that is your focus, stock music, you're not fooling around with sync, you just like passive income and that's all you're going for, and you're not even dealing with content ID, then I would seriously consider Audio Sparks. As far as the perpetual thing, are you really planning to take your songs off Pond 5? Audio Jungle? Motion Array? VFine? Are you gonna take the songs off there? It took you forever to get them in there. Perpetual is not as big a deal as you think. There are more songs that you'll make tomorrow, next week, next month. Like I said, unless you are seriously planning to pitch to other exclusive libraries or other libraries that might be perpetual or need to have those songs free, then this is not a big deal to you. Put them in Audio Sparks along with all your other libraries. That's why my Draw the Line video was so important. You need to decide when you have the song where it's going. Is it going into the stock world or is it going to the sync world? And if it's going to the sync world, maybe Audio Sparks can be one of your exclusive libraries you tie it to, or maybe another exclusive library you tie it to. If it's going to go into the stock world and it's going to go there forever and you're going to put it on Content ID, then you want to steer clear of anything that might be over on this side. And Audio Sparks kind of starts to veer over more towards an exclusive library that can also be non exclusive especially when you look at the things about content ID and perpetual. You can also do what I'm doing. You can put some stuff in the non-exclusive or only use their exclusive library and put some songs in there just to test it out and see how it works. That's what I'm going to do. So I hope this helps clear some things up about Audio Sparks and give you some information, some good, true information about this library, about if you should work with it. If you have any questions or comments about Audio Sparks, I would love to hear your experiences down below. Or if you have questions about using it, you can put that down below in the comments as well. I've enjoyed working with Audio Sparks and they are very quick with communication. If I ever have an issue, they resolve it, or at least they give me a, a straight answer very quickly. One last thing about Audio Sparks it's a lot. Like a As I said before, there are a lot of options, some that I haven't even talked about. Also, they are pretty quick to answer questions that you might have about things. But here's the thing, they do pay. I have made hundreds of dollars with this library in the past year, and I hope to do more in the future. Make sure you see this video that I just did recently about drawing the line. It's important for knowledge about if you should put stuff into Audio Sparks. If this video helped, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and as always, Thanks for watching.